Hello, and welcome to the MCS video on partial fractions. You may have seen how to integrate simple functions using some techniques like substitutions and integration by parts. However, you might not know how to integrate some very simple functions, namely rational functions, using these techniques. The method of partial fractions is one that allows us to integrate rational functions. The idea here is that we treat a rational function as the result of adding some simpler rational functions by finding a common denominator. The technique of integrating by partial fractions is the process of undoing this common denominator to get a bunch of simple pieces and then integrating those simple pieces. In this video, we'll go through some examples and discuss some general guidelines for integrating rational functions using the partial fraction method. Let's start with an introductory example. To get started, let's look at the following example. Suppose we're asked to integrate the rational function 4 over x squared minus 6x plus 5. Before we get started, let's make the following observation. Suppose we're asked to subtract two rational functions, like 1 over x minus 5 minus 1 over x minus 1. The first step is to find a common denominator. In this example, we get x minus 1 over x minus 5 times x minus 1 minus x minus 5 over x minus 1 times x minus 5. We can simplify, and we get 4 over x squared minus 6x plus 5. That was the original rational function we were interested in. So notice that we can write the rational function 4 over x squared minus 6x plus 5 as the difference of two simpler rational functions. This means that when we want to integrate 4 over x squared minus 6x plus 5, we can write it as a difference of two simpler integrals. We can write it as the integral of 1 over x minus 5 minus the integral of 1 over x minus 1. Each of these is simpler to integrate, and they give us log x minus 5 absolute value minus log x minus 1 in absolute value plus a constant. Having seen this introductory example, we might ask whether the technique used was simply a coincidence or whether there's something more general in play. We'll now discuss some general guidelines that will allow us to integrate more complicated rational functions. We'll start by discussing the case where the degree in the top is smaller than the degree in the bottom. To get started, if we're given a rational function f of x equals p of x divided by q of x, exactly one of the following cases must hold. The first case is when the degree of p is smaller than the degree of q. The second case is when the degree of p is greater than or equal to the degree of q. To get started, let's discuss a guide for integrating the rational function p of x over q of x when the degree of p is smaller than the degree of q. If necessary, we should factor q of x into a product of linear and irreducible quadratic terms. In other words, we should factor the denominator as much as possible. Next, we try to write p of x over q of x as a sum of terms where every linear factor ax plus b to the k in the denominator gives us a sum of k terms of the following form then each term corresponding to an irreducible quadratic, alpha x squared plus beta x plus gamma to the m, will yield a sum of m terms of the following form. After we've done this, we are going to solve for these unknown quantities, the a's, the c's, and the d's, by multiplying both sides by a common denominator and equating coefficients. The result is that we've written p of x over q of x as a sum of simpler rational functions, and then we integrate each of the simpler terms. Having seen a guide for integrating using partial fractions, we should now look at an example to see how it's done in practice. Suppose we're asked to integrate the rational function x squared plus x plus 8 divided by x minus 1 times x squared plus 4. In this question, we're lucky, and the denominator has already been factored for us. We can also see that the degree in the top, which is 2, is smaller than the degree in the bottom which is 3. So we can just go ahead and use the approach outlined in our guide. We should separate the expression using the factors in the bottom. 
the term x minus 1 in the bottom will give us a term a over x minus 1 and the term x squared plus 4 in the bottom will give us a term bx plus c over x squared plus 4. To figure out what a, b, and c are, we should multiply both sides of the equation by a common denominator. On the left-hand side, we should multiply by x minus 1 times x squared plus 4. And on the right-hand side, we should multiply by x minus 1 times x squared plus 4. We should then simplify the resulting equation. On the left, we get x squared plus x plus 8. And on the right, we get a times x squared plus 4 plus bx plus c times x minus 1. We now have the expression x squared plus x plus 8 equals a times x squared plus 4 plus bx plus c times x minus 1. The next step is to expand out. We get ax squared plus 4a plus bx squared minus bx plus cx minus c. We should then group together the quadratic terms, group together the linear terms, and group together the constant terms on the right. In order to find a, b, and c, we should compare the coefficients on the left with the coefficients on the right. Comparing quadratics gives 1 is equal to a plus b. Comparing linears gives 1 is equal to minus b plus c. And comparing constants gives 8 is equal to 4a minus c. We now solve the system of equations using substitution or elimination to get that a has to be 2, b has to be minus 1, and c has to be 0. Now that we know that a is 2, b is minus 1, and c is equal to 0, we can rewrite x squared plus x plus 8 divided by x minus 1 times x squared plus 4 as 2 over x minus 1 minus x over x squared plus 4. So we can now integrate x squared plus x plus 8 over x minus 1 times x squared plus 4 by splitting it into the two integrals the integral of 2 over x minus 1 minus the integral of x over x squared plus 4. The first integral is fairly straightforward, so we leave it alone. The second integral requires a substitution. We make the substitution u equals x squared plus 4, which means du is equal to 2x dx. And so we're left with 2 times the integral of 1 over x minus 1 dx minus a half the integral of 1 over u du. Integrating the first term gives us 2 log absolute value of x minus 1, while integrating the second term gives us minus a half log absolute value of u plus c. Substituting u equals x squared plus 4 gives us 2 log absolute value of x minus 1 minus 1 half log of x squared plus 4 plus c. So we conclude that the integral of x squared plus x plus 8 divided by x minus 1 times x squared plus 4 is equal to 2 log absolute value of x minus 1 minus 1 half log x squared plus 4 plus c. We have now seen some examples and discussed some guidelines for integrating rational functions using partial fractions where the degree in the top is smaller than the degree in the bottom. One might ask, what do you do when the degree in the top is larger than the degree in the bottom? The answer is to use long division and combine it with the method that we've already seen. Let's take a look at some examples and see how this is done. Let's discuss a guide for integrating rational functions p over q when the degree of p is greater than or equal to the degree of q. We should do long division to write p as g times q plus r, where g is a polynomial, r is a polynomial, and the degree of r is smaller than the degree of q. This means we can rewrite our rational function p over q in a much simpler form. We substitute in the expression that we get from long division for p, and then simplify. We get that p over q is equal to g, a polynomial, plus the rational function r over q. Since g is a polynomial, it's easy to integrate. And what's left over is a rational function. Note that r has smaller degree than q, so we can use our previous guide to integrate the rational function r over q. Let's take a look at how to use this guide in an example. 
Suppose we're asked to find the definite integral from 2 to 6 of the function x cubed minus x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus x. This is a rational function, and if we look, we see that the degree in the top, 3, is larger than the degree in the bottom, 2. This means to get started, we need to do long division. I take the leading term of x squared minus x and see how many times it divides the leading term of x cubed minus x squared plus 1 x cubed divided by x squared gives me x. I then multiply out and take the difference. This leaves me with 1. I now look at the leading term of x squared minus x and I see how many times it goes into this remainder. It doesn't go in at all and that tells me that I stop. So this tells me that I can write x cubed minus x squared plus 1 as x times x squared minus x plus the remainder of 1. Since we can write x cubed minus x squared plus 1 as x times x squared minus x plus 1, we can simplify our rational function. Subbing in the expression that we get from long division, and then simplifying, we can write x cubed minus x squared plus 1 over x squared minus x as x plus 1 over x squared minus x. So now we have a rational function written as a polynomial plus a simpler rational function. In order to apply our partial fractions technique, we need to simplify 1 over x squared minus x. We should factor the denominator. That's fairly straightforward here. The bottom factors into x times x minus 1. The next step in our partial fraction technique is to separate the expression using the factors in the denominator. This allows us to write 1 over x times x minus 1 as a over x plus b over x minus 1. To solve for the values of a and b, we should multiply both sides of this equation by a common denominator. The common denominator is x times x minus 1, which gives us the following expression. We should now try to simplify on both sides. On the left-hand side we get 1, and on the right-hand side we get a times x minus 1 plus b times x. Expanding out, we get 1 is equal to ax minus a plus bx. Grouping together the linear terms and the constant terms, we can now equate the coefficients. Looking at the linear terms, I get that a plus b should equal 0, because there's no linear term on the left and 1 should equal minus a. Solving for a and b, we get that a is minus 1 and b is equal to plus 1. Since a is minus 1 and b is plus 1, we get the following expression for 1 over x squared minus x. It's equal to minus 1 over x plus 1 over x minus 1. As a result, we can now split up the original integral the integral of x cubed minus x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus x can be split into the integral of x plus the integral of 1 over x squared minus x and that can be further split up into the integral of x plus the integral of minus 1 over x plus 1 over x minus 1. Now that we have simpler integrals, we just need to compute them. Integrating x will give us x squared over 2, while integrating minus 1 over x will give us minus logarithm absolute value x, and integrating 1 over x minus 1 will give us logarithm absolute value of x minus 1. We need to evaluate these from x equals 2 to x equals 6 since we're computing a definite integral. Before evaluating, let's simplify the expression a bit. We get x squared over 2 and then we get a term by combining the logarithms. We get logarithm absolute x minus 1 over x. Now we just need to evaluate the antiderivative at x equals 6 and x equals 2. We plug in x equals 6 and we subtract the value that we get by plugging in x equals 2. We simplify and after simplifying we see that the answer is 16 plus the logarithm of 5 over 3. So we conclude that the integral from 2 to 6 of x cubed minus x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus x is equal to 16 
plus a logarithm of 5 thirds. Let's look at another example. Suppose we're asked to integrate 7x squared minus 12x plus 13 over x minus 2 squared times 4x squared plus 1. To begin, we compare the degree in the top with the degree in the bottom. The degree in the top is 2 and the degree in the bottom is 4. Since the degree in the top is smaller than the degree in the bottom, we do not need to do long division and we can proceed with the partial fraction technique. Also notice that the bottom is already completely factored. The term 4x squared plus 1 is an irreducible quadratic. So to begin, we need to separate the expression using the factors in the denominator. Notice that the factor x minus 2 squared will contribute two terms since the exponent is 2. The term x minus 2 squared will contribute a over x minus 2 plus b over x minus 2 squared, while the term 4x squared plus 1 will contribute the term cx plus d over 4x squared plus 1. The next step is to multiply both sides of the equation by a common denominator in order to solve for a, b, c, and d. This means on the left and the right, we should multiply by the term x minus 2 squared times 4x squared plus 1. We should then simplify the resulting equation, leaving a 7x squared minus 12x plus 13 on the left-hand side, while on the right-hand side, after we simplify, we get the following complicated expression. The next step is to equate the coefficients in order to solve for a, b, c, and d. Comparing the terms with x cubed on the left and the right, we get the equation 0 is equal to 4a plus c, because there are no x cubes on the left, while the coefficients of x cubed on the right is 4a plus c. Next we move to the x squared terms. On the left hand side we have 7, and on the right hand side we have minus 8a plus 4b minus 4c plus d. We now compare the coefficient of x. On the left hand side we have minus 12, and on the right hand side we have a plus 4c plus 4d. Finally, we compare the constant terms. On the left hand side we have 13, and on the right hand side we have minus 2a plus b plus 4d. We now have a system of equations for a, b, c, and d which we can solve. Solving this system of equations gives us a equals 0, b equals 1, c equals 0, and d equals 3. As a result, we can write the rational function 7x squared minus 12x plus 13 divided by x minus 2 squared times 4x squared plus 1 as 1 over x minus 2 squared plus 3 over 4x squared plus 1. We're now ready to integrate. Our work has shown us that we should integrate 1 over x minus 2 squared plus 3 over 4x squared plus 1. The first step is to split it into two terms, the integral of 1 over x minus 2 squared plus 3 times the integral of 1 over 4x squared plus 1. We're going to focus on the second term. In order to integrate 1 over 4x squared plus 1, we have to make a substitution u equals 2x, which results in du equals 2dx. As a result, we're left with the integral of 1 over x minus 2 squared dx plus 3 halves the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1 du. Integrating the first term gives us minus 1 over x minus 2, while integrating 1 over u squared plus 1 gives us arctangent of u plus c. So we get minus 1 over x minus 2 plus 3 halves arctangent of u plus c. However, we have to substitute back in u equals 2x. As a result, we're able to conclude that the integral of 7x squared minus 12x plus 13 over x minus 2 squared times 4x squared plus 1 is equal to minus 1 over x minus 2 plus 3 halves arctangent of 2x plus c. To summarize, the method of partial fractions can be used to integrate rational functions. We have seen that terms with repeated factors that can be tricky, and that irreducible quadratics require a little bit extra work. However, we hope that with some practice you will learn to master this technique. We've compiled a list of additional practice problems to help you get started. Good luck, and thanks for watching.